Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Prep Life Podcast. This is your founder and CEO of Glam Girl Bikini, Amy Anger. And today I'm joined with my fabulous co-host, Lee Marie Hassetter. Hey, Lee. Welcome Hi. To- all right. Well, we are going to be talking about all things natural bodybuilding in the MPC because let me tell you that Tyler has definitely stood um, to his word, I guess would be the best way to say that, is that he is really pushing that natural shows are going to grow. I've already seen it happening this year and I have, um, very excited, exciting news to share with everybody that we learned over the weekend. So for those of you that don't know, Lee Marie and I were at the natural Kansas city, which was a sold out show. It was incredible. Um, we haven't had a MPC Midwest show ever in Kansas city hosted here in our hometown. And, um, the fact that it was a natural drug tested one was amazing. I think there were like 200 over 200 athletes, something like that. It was a big show for yeah. a natural because usually the drug tested ones are really under attended, but I think they, they said they sold out the night show. It was a thousand people in that room. And at, the, at Haraz, is it Haraz? No, or it was packed. It was so good. Yeah, it was a vibe. So Lee Marie has a lot to share with you. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to go over these announcements that Jack to Tony and Anne had mentioned to all of us because we were very excited. He was just kind of saying how the Midwest hasn't gotten a lot of love when it comes to having national shows and pro qualifiers, which is so true. And it's a big market. Um, you know, it's either East coast or West coast, I feel like. Um, so we were so excited when they announced that next year, they're not only bringing a national show. So pro qualifier to, um, Kansas city, which is crazy, but it's also drug tested. So, Marie can compete at it. I'm so excited. I um, told Amy, I was like, I don't care what it is. We are prepping for that show. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we were ecstatic. And then some really good news. I, you've probably, listeners have probably seen on social media that they're, um, they're also doing a second show for it, drug tested here in Kansas city, um, through the NPC Midwest. And that one's November 23rd. I forget what it's called. Um, Unfortunately for, uh, well, fortunately and unfortunately for us, we have uh, Masters USA's that weekend. So we'll be in Los Angeles, but um, they're, what's super cool, and I'm definitely going to put it on my calendar for next year, is that at the same venue, so the casino at Haraz, they have a a voodoo lounge, and they're going to have this huge, like, vibe here, and they're going to have pro drug tested bikini, which, again, it's like, Once you go pro or you get your Olympia qualification as a natural drug tested athlete, there's really not anywhere for you to go. Like you can't really like go to an an open event, uh, anything other than the Ben Weeder and, you know, like expect to get prize money. So it's just great that they're adding a bunch of pro shows too. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. What are your thoughts on that? Cause I mean, I know that would affect you when you go pro. I love it. I love it. And I, I feel like it could be kind of a reset. I do think that the the level of even bikini, and I just think about bikini because it's the, the category that I coach and compete in mostly. Um, it's just, it, it keeps advancing every year. And every year there's like more muscle and then they get a little bit leaner and they, they mm-hmm. reward, you know, bigger and leaner looks and it it kind of is starting to go away from what it was in the beginning which was just you know your natural beach body kind of look fit Mm -hmm. but not like striations or anything like that and I feel like by growing the natural base it's almost like a reset for that because there's only so far you can go naturally and genetically even if you have like the genetic lottery um there's Mm -hmm. just only so much you can do not enhanced. So not only am I really excited because then I have like a shot at being competitive. Um, I I just think it's a really good reset for people. Yeah, I do too. It calibrates the, the standard, like you said, going back to, you know, I've always said like back in the day, if I would have known what nationals was (laughs) the first like 15 times I got nationally qualified. Um, I might've had a chance of going pro with that physique just because back then it was, you know, but I just didn't know what the next step was. I didn't realize that once you like 
win your open class and like you go to nationals and um, compete at the national level. So, I mean, not knowing that like back then I probably would have had a better shot because that my physique, you know, I started out in figure and really now like how figure was back when I started in 2011, like bikinis even bigger than that, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. Yep. So. And it advanced so fast. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it's really excited. I'm very excited. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about it too. So there were a couple of things we both wanted to talk about. Um, first of all, let's, um, share the good news. So do you want to talk about this is the first time Lee Marie is coached in person. You've done one virtual with the same yep. person. So yep. tell us about, tell us about your experience in person as a coach. Oh, so fun. It was so much fun. I could not have asked for a better athlete. So I had a figure athlete, Hannah Joe. Um, was my figure athlete and she this was her second competition with me but her first one I was not able to be there so I was coaching her over FaceTime and texting and videos and all of that Um, Mm -hmm. and I really do feel like we brought a better fuller more muscular package I was really excited to see some like she competed against other figure girls it wasn't just her in her class and at a natural local level show I mean you just never know with something like figure bikini is usually you're usually going to have a few other girls at least in the overall and and in your open classes but figure I mean you never know who's going to show up and so I was really happy that she got to pose next to some other girls and she won first place in both classes She was novice and open. And then we were in the overall pose down and we did not place, but we're, we're guessing we got second. Yeah. Yeah. Overall. There's a little bit of overall. We don't really tell you, but it was close. It was close between her and the, and the girl that won, which just had a beautiful physique as well. But, um, she looked great. I, I was really struck with how important posing is and how difficult it is to pose um, figure. And so I think there were a lot of ladies up there where it was just like, "Mm, you need to work on that a little bit. But Hannah did amazing and her posing. We've worked with some really good um, posing coaches and she's just worked really hard. She had great stage presence. Um, She did really well. It was really fun to just take her through a show day, but to just realize that she was pretty much, you know, ready. And there wasn't any really, we weren't panicking. We weren't changing the plan. We just, we had the plan. We let it, you know, she was so calm. You were so calm. Like you, if you were nervous at all, I couldn't tell same with her. Like, and we kind of just like hit it by the buzzer too, because figure went on first. They and, were first and she and was, she was fourth in the, in the show. <laughs> like, yep. We're like, yeah. you're like taking your pins out of her hair down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pumped up real quick, but yeah, no, she did amazing. But she was like a glass half full person where she was just like, she's like, I'm just excited. I'm just don't have to wait around. I'm just going to get this over with and go up there. And Oh, I'm with her. I would so much rather not wait around. And I loved the the order they had this show in. They didn't stick bikini very, very last. Yes. Thank goodness. It would seem to like to do. (laughs) So that was really good. So we didn't even have to wait around that much for your bikini competitors either. Yeah. Yeah. Because at these shows, they um, do classic and men's physique at the end always, which I love that format. It makes it so nice for the bikini athletes, but yeah. um, Okay. So we'll get into maybe first, do you want to first talk about like how this um, prep was different from her and like how she improved her package and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. So when I got Hannah Jo before her last show, which was in October, I got her six weeks out from that show. She came to me from a former coach um, and just for some some personal reasons and some just dissatisfaction with the coaching, um, the level of coaching um, and the level of service she was getting, she switched over to me. So I basically had six weeks to prep her into that show. And we did, we were able to make some really good progress, but I was really excited after that show to go through a, a reverse and a short improvement season. So we were really able to work on bringing her cardio down, getting her food up. We realized with her that it's really important that she does 
does some flexible dieting in the off season. And so she's really good at following directions and hitting all of her macros, but it was really important for her in the off season to be able to have some flexibility. So we would have certain meals or certain days that she could just count her macros, would not have to follow the meal plan um, and just make substitutions and have fun things. So that was really important to her. And then we were able to get her cardio down and put on some good muscle and bring in a fuller package. We did have to kind of grind at the end. Um, and I know that she would have liked to come in a little bit more conditioned, but as far as, I mean, we were just talking about this too, as far as a natural show, I think she was pretty much on point because her and the, the other overall, the, the girl that she was in the pose down with, there were two, there were three total, um, but the girl that won, their conditioning levels were pretty much the same. So she was pretty on point with her conditioning. So I was really happy about that. And then one thing she told me backstage was, I was asking her like, are you gonna go out to eat with your family afterwards? She had family that flew in to see her on stage. So that was really cool. That was nice. Like, yeah, I just told them to pick a restaurant. I don't really care. And she said, it's so different from my show last year where I was so food focused and so obsessed. And I planned out the restaurant weeks in advance. And she said, I had a cookie in the freezer for months. And so just the fact that we were able to take her through an improvement season with flexible dieting, with enough food, you know, with enough variety that she felt like she's like, I, I have a couple of snacks. I don't really care. I didn't really buy anything. I'm, I'm to go out to eat and have a good time and then even when she checked in with me the following Monday after the show was Saturday the following Monday um her weight was up a little bit but nowhere near her last show she didn't blow up it wasn't anything like that and so it was just a good lesson on just the growth of you know good coaching learning your athlete letting them have that flexibility in the off season you know the ones that can handle it things like that and and her really improving her mental health as well as bringing a better package. So I was yeah. really, really proud of that. Yeah. Just from the outside perspective, because I kind of knew her journey and her story and everything and um, looking at her muscle density, you know, you guys put on a lot of size and kudos to both of you for working so hard at, you know, she had unfortunately, you know, like been in a situation where calories were low for a very long time and cardio and even in that six weeks, I remember you kind of pulled out cardio, a little bit of cardio and gave her a little bit more food. And she actually looked way better um, with that. And you could just see how healthy her muscle bellies were. And she was really like, before you got there at team posing on Friday, she just kept saying like how self-conscious she was about how much more she had weighed. And I was like, you have, you've put on muscle 100%. I'm like, just trust me. You're right on target, like with where you need to be. And hopefully she understands that, that she did put on a, quite a bit of muscle. Do you remember what her stage weight was comparably? Because I really think 100% of that gain was, he was, yeah, he was four pounds, uh, three pounds higher on stage this year than her last prep. Yeah. You could tell it was muscle 100%. And she also put on like when she checked in, she was four pounds. It was a four pound difference this time than yeah. last. Like she, she had gained four pounds more <laughs> post show last year than this, than this time. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. And I do think yeah. when, when we saw the girl that took the overall that competitor yeah. and how much muscle she had and how, you know, um, like how much size she had, I yeah. do think she, Hannah kind of realized that, you know, you do need size. It's not only about getting as shredded and tiny mm -hmm. as possible. It's about muscle. It's bodybuilding, you know, yeah. like they yeah, want because they had the same conditioning. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, <laughs> speaking of her win, um, I always think I think it's really important for people to understand that first of all, in the NPC there, there's not a ton of drug tested events, but kind of every promoter does it a little bit differently. And I think that they're trying to clean up and like try to get things standardized much like the, you know, there's different sanctions that have just drug testing at every single show. And that's what they're known for. Um, so like, for example, when I did the natural Indiana and this was years ago, um, we did our urine test at check-in and everyone did it. 
we did it in a bathroom stall and there was a nurse outside the stall. We had to hand the cup to them. And then um, when I competed like a month or two later at the Natural Ohio, um, Dave Lieberman's show, he's been doing drug tested shows for a long time and he would take the top five. So when I got first call outs, I kind of got shuffled into this big room, had a toilet and a person standing in there awkwardly watching you while you pee. Um, but I mean, it makes it so that it's valid, right? So so there's those scenarios. And then you take like a bin weeder where not everybody gets urine tested, not even the winners of the classes. Sometimes it's just the pro card winner. So that's just like two people out of a bikini. So it's one masters and one open. So you had talked to Hannah about what she had to do because she won her open class and got nationally qualified. So what oh. did she have to do for this one? And I think that this is kind of how things are going to be a little bit moving forward. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So she, we're, I met her backstage after the show and I just remember I was congratulating her and saying, Hey, we should take pictures. And she was like, Oh, I have to go. They told me I have to go pee right away. I have to go pee in a cup. So she kind of ran off with someone And, um, it took quite a while. And then when I checked back in with her, she said that they were in a different room. So it wasn't backstage, but they were just in a room and there was a portable toilet with a curtain around it. And all the girls were in that room and you just took turns and you just, no, she said, nobody was watching you, but it was basically like, there's nothing you can do. It's not even a real bathroom. Yeah. (laughs) They just went in and not even a real toilet. No. <laughs> yeah. She did tell me at the show, she was like, it took a while because it took me a long time to be able to pee, which I get. I mean, we didn't pull water at all for her. Right. But we also did not do a, di- a diuretic. So that was something different too. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't do a diuretic. We didn't pull water at all, but still like you're not chugging your water because you don't want to have to pee all the time and ruin your tan. So um, so yeah, I can understand why it would take you a little bit to like, even if, especially if you're a little bit nervous, cause yeah. um, but I mean, I guess if you do a show tan, if you've ever done a show tan, you're literally just in a room with a bunch of girls, just everyone's just out getting tanned. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, so we just thought we'd share that experience. And then I had, um, two athletes in the show and I had a 50 plus, novice, um, competitor and she got first in her class. Um, so Cindy, I was excited for her. And then I had, um, my client Halen, which she competed with glam girl, um, in 2020. So it was literally the first show that Jack and Ann had brought back after the shutdown. So we did that one in Omaha and she did very well in Omaha. Um, and then she, you know, she took kind of like a four year break and, um, you know, so I guess it was, you know, a little bit less than that, um, because she approached me, um, last year just saying, you know, I kind of have the bug again. So, um, you know, she prepped for the show and, uh, she want, she got second in all three of her classes. So, um, in her open class and she's 43, um, and it was a lot of young girls. So. You would never guess that she was 43. I don't think. Well, they switched them too. Didn't they switch him in that class too? Yeah. They, she was really? in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So in the middle and they switched her. Yeah. So, I mean, she ended up in second, but it was close and I've never seen so many walks to the back curtain in her categories. So in pre-judging it's for those of you that don't know, I just always want to make sure I explain myself because sometimes I, I talk like. And I know a lot of people know this about the sport, but those of you listeners that don't is the prejudging. You don't normally walk to the back curtain. If you are in the NPC, if you're an amateur, you are just going to turn front to back your mandatory poses in the comparison round. You're going to do your individual and then you're going to do call outs. And again, it's going to be front to back. But in this show, her 40 class was the biggest bikini class. So she did 40 novice and then 40 open. And it was, it was by far the biggest class. And that's what's happening in the masters, especially when they don't do height splits because they kind of lump them all together. And there's just more masters competitors than there are, um, open really. Um, so both her masters classes, they walked them several times back and forth to the back curtain. And she, she got first calls. And like I said, she was, um, in second in both of those. And then, um, there was a lot of deliberation in the open. There were six and, you know, she was splitting, center kept getting pushed in and then they walked them again and again it just seemed like she walked so many times during pre-judging uh where but i didn't really see so that good at it. She rocked it. <laughs> well we i anticipated 
honestly, like I always, you know, if I, if I prepare somebody for something, we, every time we met, we walked to the back curtain because I'm like, I'm preparing you for the overall. I'm putting you in the open class and I'm expecting that we're going to be in the overall. So, um, you know, luckily she was prepared for that. Um, because I've made that mistake in the past. Um, I made that mistake with my client, Sam, when we had originally put her in for like, um, uh, wellness. Mm -hmm. And then at the last minute she decided to do bikini. And so then like, lo and behold, like, you know, we had only planned for a bikini a week and then she found herself in the overall. And I was like, shoot, I haven't practiced your walk to the back curtain. So we're like doing the walk to the back curtain, you know, because at that point, you know, that you're going to have to do it for the overall. So I, I've learned my lesson with that. And I just always anticipate, um, because like yourself included, um, you know, that's kind of the standard that we want to set. And that's, that's really, I mean, I, I judge in that, you know, I judge very periodically, but I also, I've been at a lot of different shows and I just, I know like kind of what it takes to get there. And, um, so I just want them to be ready for it. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, great. um, it was kind of cool though. Cause we were able to like reverse her into the show and we brought up food like the last two weeks. Um, so like once her tie-ins came in, we kind of brought her in early, like two weeks ahead of time. And then I was able to give her more food leading into the show. And I, I think it really helped her. I even noticed that the night show, like I almost wish I would have done more than like 300 carbs on her, her front loading because, um, as she was getting like the honey and all that stuff in the morning, I noticed her tie in, especially on her left side. Cause her left one's like the last one to come in her left tie in came in a lot sharper at night. Um, unfortunately, wow. but, um, you know, it was yeah. only our second show. So you kind of live and learn and you learn people's bodies. And mm-hmm. so for sure, any thoughts on any of that stuff? Like, what did you see in the bikini division that you, that stood out to you in general? I did notice that they walked a lot of the classes in free judging. Yeah. Like yeah. A lot, a lot more than I've ever seen before. It was just yeah. that they, yeah. that they did that. It was great. I, I did notice, and I just loved this so much. There was one master's competitor who was in the open 50 plus and 60 plus who was just adorable. Yeah. Everyone just loved her and she just shined on stage and she looked really good. And she was the only one in her, in her open class, which is kind of a bummer, but she looked incredible. And I just wanted to be like, dude, this, you can do it at any age. You can start at any time. You can just get up there with confidence and look amazing and just show off your hard work and be super healthy. And she's, yeah. really, she's having a blast. So she was beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. I wish that my client was in the 50 novice and she was in the 50 open. I'm like, Oh, that would have been so cool if you guys would have been up against each other, but yeah, she was gorgeous. So differences between figure and bikini, like what are you, what's your advice for a figure competitor versus a bikini competitor? So figure does need to get a little bit leaner. Um, and so you might have to diet and cardio them a little bit harder with, as far as training goes, the shapes are a lot different. So we do a more, a lot more quad work than I would ever do with a bikini competitor. Obviously if it just depends on their body, if I give quad work to a bikini competitor, but usually we don't focus on those muscles. Um, and then we do a lot of back work, a lot of lat, direct lat work, um, and then shoulders. And then something that I noticed with Hannah Joe when we did our team posing seminar, um, and I was able to see her in person, which was really helpful. Um, my main concern was keeping her upper body full as we tried to lean out her legs as much as possible to see those lines of the muscles. And so I did switch up her programming a little bit and we did some more of her leg days were more, um, high reps, burnout sets, um, threw in some plyos. I took those out obviously a couple weeks before the show to bring down inflammation and we tapered cardio down as well, but we just started doing more high reps, low weight, a lot of banded stuff, a lot of sets to failure, things like that. And then on her upper body days, I kept in more of the higher volume, lower reps, pushing the heavy weight, trying to keep as much size as possible. Um, Because I mean, just as women in general too, I think 
it's it's harder to lean out your legs and so and to keep size on top but for figure it's a very um you know v tapered martini glass look and so it's even more important that we kept her size and i think that really helped us keep her full um and not not like lose much size on top while we were dieting and pushing hard into the show so that was just something that a strategy that we used a few weeks out from her show this time love it yeah well, any other closing thoughts before we sign off? I mean, I'm just very excited about all the shows that are coming to Kansas City. And yeah. I just think if you are in the area and you want to do a show, even if it's just a bucket list item for you, do it. 1000% do it. I think it's totally worth it just to prove to yourself that you can and to see yourself um, reach a level of physique and of discipline that you absolutely can do, but you might not think you can do. And it's just really, it's a fun thing to do. And you, I mean, you can do a prep in less than a year and like, or you can, you know, plan for a show next year. I just love the experience. It's so good for, you know, your physique, for your fitness, for your mental, for your discipline, for your, even for your health, things like that. I would just say, if you are in Kansas city, there's, there's shows coming up do a show, do a competition, just go for it. Let this yeah. be your year. Love it. Yeah. And we, I mean, we have some insider information that we kind of learned at the show too, that, um, a certain gym might be opening soon. That's a huge, going to be a huge bodybuilding Mecca in my opinion, um, with very customized gym equipment, uh, very glute focused and it's only a couple of blocks from my house, which is insane. Um, I still have to kind of pinch myself. Um, it hasn't been opened yet, but there will be a private posing room and a group posing room. It's going to be awesome. It's going to have a fit 3d scanner. So stay tuned because on the map for bodybuilders. yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, if you liked this episode, please be sure to leave us a rating and review. It just helps other listeners find this kind of information. So if you found value in it, please find it in your heart to pay it forward to others so that they can find the show too. And then if you would feel so kind also to tag us on your story or let us know what you thought of it, find us on Instagram at prep life podcast or at glam girl bikini. And if you would like your unicorn prep coaching from Lee Marie or myself, you can go to glamgirlbikini.com and hit the get started button. Thanks for listening guys. <laughs>